Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio all the way live from Maui. Dr. Kathy Forty, Dr. Kathy, it is such an honor to have you here today. How are you? Oh, thank you so much, Jay. It's good to be here, even though it's, it's a very awesome. hot day in Maui right now. <laughs> it's awesome to have you here. So you guys, let me give you guys uh, Kathy's bio. She's an amazing human being, and you guys were going to find that out as you listen to today's podcast, but she's a clinical psychologist, is also an author who after a near-death experience connected with multidimensional beings to understand the awakening of consciousness of course, now she also is involved in new technology and, and man's origins and evolution. She is very near and dear to my heart, very, very similar backgrounds. Um, and we have some insane talking points here today. But as I've been doing on the Jay Campbell podcast a lot lately, especially in the last three to four months, um, I kind of want to just get your bearing on, and it's obviously an opinion question, but where is humanity truly going right now? I mean, obviously, we already talked off air about you know, is there going to be a shift in consciousness? Is there going to be, you know, some sort of a change uh, to the way humanity, you know, processes uh, life, at, you know, as it is now in the third dimension? I mean, obviously, a lot of people have said a lot of things, you know, you can think of Dolores Cannon, uh, you know, and all of her uh, regression hypnosis sessions with so many different people talking about that there was going to be a shift, that there was going to be a split, the new earth, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just interested in your thoughts, because obviously, in the last two years, uh, and again, everything is perceptually based in the way we label things. But I mean, the world has truly shifted off its axis. We have a group of tyrannical, you know, parasitic, you know, call them reptilian, call them demons, call them whatever you want, you know, that clearly don't want us to evolve consciously and want to make us into transhumanist, biobot, cyborg, you know, uh, no soul, you know, again, create like this, yeah. you know, what did uh, Steiner called it? The Araman. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of, it seems like where we're headed again, if you connect into that, you know, mainstream narrative, but just what are your thoughts? And I know you're obviously extremely learned about this. Well, um, I don't think that we can expect uh, uh, a miracle in the next year. <laughs> the white hats aren't coming to save us. No, we want it. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, this, this was, is a process that started a while ago. And it's yeah. going to continue. Some of us are going to check out of the planet before we see it end. And, right. you know, uh, and we've already seen, I've already seen timeline shifts. You know, I kept saying, I want to go back on that other timeline, you know? Right. I mean, things that are bizarre that, I mean, here's an example, going into a shop and saying, I like chai tea latte. And I'd been in there many times and I ordered a chai and they said, well, we don't have that. And yeah. I, I said, get out of it. And they said, we never carried it ever. Wow. <laughs> and right. I talked to the owner. She goes, no, we never carried it ever. And I had been getting it there for years. And I thought, wow. you know, what what timeline did I just jump on to that doesn't right. have chai tea latte? By the way, <laughs> you know? it's hilarious that you like chai tea lattes because that's literally my wife and I are literally like that's we're possessed by chai tea lattes. Like everywhere <laughs> we go in the world, we order chai tea lattes, even in Mexico. That's hilarious. <laughs> so I, I think that. Uh, um, you know, as we were talking right right before here, that a lot of people think it's time to start letting go of things. I mean, not even not just uh, physically, but emotionally, yeah. both everything combined. You know, Lighten lightening load. your load, lightening your load. What does that mean to, to stay flexible, to stay fluid, to get rid of your stuff? And we all know totally. we have plenty of stuff, stuff. Uh, way more than yeah. we need. And uh, that alone is a freeing process. But, totally. 
let go of uh, work on those things, those relationships that, you know, there's still residual stuff there, maybe that you might not even be aware of that from a higher level perspective is still influencing everything you're doing in a day to day. So it's giving us time to work through some of that stuff. Now, obviously, some people aren't doing their work, um, but, you know, that's their choice. Uh, just like everything else, it's a choice. And, you know, right. I kind of respect that everybody's in the process is different along the line and where they are in time and space is, is up to them. And, and at first, you know, when you start to, to see people starting to mandate things and impose their will on others, you know, we get mad, you know, and, mm-hmm. and we fight back and, and, you know, we, we try not to be like them and do the same thing <laughs> when down the line, we were probably saying, I told you so. Right. Um, but, you know, but, you know, everybody is different in the process. And, you know, right now, I have to say this, I'm seeing a lot of artificial intelligence, humans oh, that yeah. are artificial intelligence. And I mean, they're already gone. They're yeah, they're humans. not even really they're human. They're not souls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a different energetic feel to them. And it seems like it's increasing. And, you know, a year ago, what I would have been saying, now, that's a bizarre thought to even think that there's already artificial intelligence beings walking the planet that look exactly right. like humans. And right. uh, but unfortunately, it is. And well, I, listen, I want to agree with you on that. from within. Well, I want to agree with you on that because I personally think, no, I'm with you. That some of these people that you're seeing that are wearing, you know, the masks and, you know, they're just literally like totally subscribing to the narrative. It's like, at this point, is this a real person that has consciousness that can actually think, you know, critically think for themselves? Because I mean, I, you know, I just came back from a mastermind in the Utah mountains and, you know, this is another topic that we can talk about, but I mean, you know, people like us are already talking about creating you know, an alternative, essentially reality, you know, off of the grid, off of the beast system, off of the metaverse, because that's where they want people, right? They want people plugged in consciously so they can steal and yeah. siphon their energy. But I think you're right. I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, Dolores Cannon called them backfill people. But I think a lot of these people now do exist. And they're in our everyday life, whether you fly on planes or travel to business events or whatever you're doing. And they're mixed in amongst us in, you know, in, in, in some sort of like, I wouldn't say eerie, it's almost educational for us to like understand that, they're, oh, they're not really soul beings mm-hmm. and they're kind of like in the way or, you know, f- around us for us to learn, avoid, evolve, whatever you want. But I I'm totally in agreement with you. I, I mean, that was what we were talking about at the mastermind that like people were saying like, look, man, we now know that the, you know, the masks are completely scientifically worthless They've been disputed. This isn't even debatable at this point. In fact, it's the inverse that we know is true, that wearing them all the time actually causes hypoxia. It also causes all sorts of uh, you know, a viral and pathogenic agents getting in the mask from wearing it all the time because obviously your mouth is a very dirty orifice. And so it's absurd that people are still wearing it. So Kathy, I think you're 100% right. I would say that the majority of these people aren't real people. A friend of mine calls them, she's very psychic, and, and she looks around and she, she points them out. She goes, they're the filler people, she calls the fillers. them. The filler people so that we don't realize a number of people have already gone. Right, you know? right, right. That's, they're like placeholders. That's literally genius. Yeah, placeholders. I mean, you know, in the video game world, they call them NPCs, non-player characters. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're right. I mean, I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, listen, my wife and I just flew to Oakland for a day to watch our daughter's soccer game. She plays for Point Loma here in San Diego. She's a junior sophomore athletically because she lost her freshman year, but you you get on the plane with these people. Again, I use the word people very loosely (laughs) and they're fully, you know, two in a shield and you're like, what? But they're there and they do have like an energy signature. They're not vacant. Like if you talk to them, they'll say something to you, but you can literally tell that they're not all there. And so I'm with you a hundred percent. I mean, I think you're genius in saying, I think I call it an intelligence test. (laughs) I mean, look, that's what we said at the mastermind that like, okay, you are now a robot. You're borderline five points over, you know, mental retardation. 
if you're still wearing it, because again, there's no evidence that says that it does anything for you other than harm you. So yeah, you're right. I mean, if that's true though, and they are filler people and they're a part of the matrix timeline or whatever you want to call it, that's their role. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, it, it, I always say this is the age of discernment. You really have to learn to use your critical thinking, discern what's truth. Don't go by everybody out there, what they're saying. Don't even go by what I'm saying, but, you know, listen to your inner voice. And, you know, sometimes you think your inner voices, but, you know, there's that higher voice that you really need to listen to that usually you, you, a lot of people just, you know, don't want to go there, but, you know, that's on their development. So we have to honor that. That's why, yeah, exactly. Beautifully stated. I mean, that's why I say it's, you know, it's all about connecting with your higher self and learning to respond out of love versus react out of fear. And the matrix, you know, the dark side, whatever you want to call them, the parasitic energies. I like Maureen St. Germain. She says, those who would hold us back, uh, yeah. you know, they yeah. want you to react out of fear. Everything that they create is fear porn. Everything, the news, the internet, the stuff they show you. Or on be Netflix. careful of the hope porn as well. True. Oh, yeah. The hope porn and the fear porn. All right. We're going to get into that. Okay. So the first point that we're hitting here, which is obviously talking about the technologies that you're involved in now um, that were channeled through you do do your near-death experience and how they work. I, please elaborate on that. Well, you know, I, many of us have defining moments in our life and uh, um, where it's like the aha moment and your life takes on a different trajectory and uh, you go, new paths are forged. And, and that's pretty much what happened to me back in 2003. I was still, I'm a retired clinical psychologist, but I still had an active practice then. And, and um, I, you know, there was nothing wrong with me, although my heart stopped, but I had no, you know, predispositions of heart conditions or anything prior to that. And I, you know, I, I went through this tunnel uh, of light at a very unusual, you know, horizontal feet first. I always say that because I've never come across anybody who's done horizontal yeah. feet first. Right. And uh, maybe that's my mode of, you know, going into what I call the um, the energy transition tunnel. Sure. sure. And uh, but they wouldn't allow me to go into the light, even though I wanted to go into the light. And and uh, um, when I had the irreverent thought that this is boring and why did I die? I wasn't sick. You know, all this energy poured into me. And that was this new guidance. And, you know, they they brought me back through the tunnel the same way into a body that was uh, paralyzed on one side. And they're telling me what to do and not to be fearful. And from then on, my life changed. I was obsessed with, you know, quantum physics. I was obsessed with mathematics and I hated math. (laughs) <laughs> and my worst subject in school, you know, it was like Greek to me. And suddenly, you know, they want me to start working with mathematics, you know, and I thought this was a cosmic joke. It had to be. Um, but then later on, I did find out the reason that they wanted to work with me was that because I was a math dummy. I had no preconceptions that, oh, no, that right. would work. That's, right. that's, you know, just too far out. Of course. So it was it was a it was a, a five year process of developing this technology that was all based on mathematics. Um, the only th- thing that was frequency related was sound. You know that was a component of it, but everything had a mathematical signature to it. Our DNA was mathematically encoded. So I'm talking about thousands of different concepts, substances, elements, so forth. They gave me the mathematical signature for. And to put this into a software-based program and to deliver it through pure quartz crystal rods that attached into a computer. And no one had ever done that before. And that sounded pretty bizarre to me. But, you know, I found a way to do it and had no idea if this was going to work or not. Uh, You know, it had like 72 different programs. uh, But when it first started, it had less. And, you know, I invited a whole bunch of people in the subtle energy community at this particular conference I went to to just try it and give me their feedback. And it went crazy. Wow. I was getting things like being told things that I never expected. People that were psychic saying they saw the guides behind this. Now, they didn't know this came out of a near-death experience, you know, and they're seeing what's going on around the person when certain things are going on. And then I hear that the society was started. This is the International Society for the Study of Subtle Energy Medicine, that it was started uh, years ago um, and uh, by Elmer Green. 
and uh, from the Menninger Foundation uh, because he had seen in the future and knew that was going to be technology coming down the pike that was very wow. energetic of this nature. And he wanted to prepare uh, them for a welcoming a society that would be open to this new kind of, of, of uh, technology. So, you know, I didn't I didn't know if it would work. So I just threw it out there to a lot of practitioners working with it. And, you know, they told me what they were discovering. And we just, you know, share, start sharing with other people. Then eventually I did do the um, the Ascension 11 technology, which is all um, uh, spiritual. The uh, where the Trinfinity 8 was uh, anti-aging. It was uh, physical problems, emotional release problems. So it had a lot, a lot of mixture of a lot of different things with a few spiritual programs. But, you know, later on, I wanted a specific thing that had spiritual programs in that was done just a little different, even though it was same a uh, coding. And uh, so, you know, I figured, OK, that I'm, is that my mission? <laughs> I think I'm done. But, oh, no, I wasn't <laughs> done yet. I mean, that's been out since 2009. Wow. And uh, done well and uh, provided a living for me. You know, I'm not rich, but it provided a living for me. Yeah. You know, living in Maui. I mean, it could be a lot worse, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, allowed me to be in Topeka, Kansas. OK. <laughs> yes. Oh, I've lived in Kansas, too. Um, and and so now it's like, you know, they started uh, they want they wanted books out there. And, you know, I'm not a sci fi writer. It was my first I, I'd written other books, but it wasn't sci-fi right. and it was coming through fast and furious. And now it's called the, it's a trilogy truth series uh, that takes place in the uh, library of Congress where a uh, library employee stumbles on a portal into an interdimensional library truth, kind of like the Kashuk records. Sure. And there he finds out is controlled somewhat by this ancient power society and, you know, he starts to use it to reveal what's going on and crimes against humanity. And the more he delves into the library, too, the, the deeper the rabbit hole gets. And wow. he finds out, you know, there's an alien agenda. He finds I mean, so it takes where X-Files left off, you right. might say, right. you know, right. goes in at the origins of humanity and everything. So. Um, so, yeah, there's a uh, second book which is being released this month. The third one will come out. In uh, next year. Okay, that's amazing. <laughs> I want to unpack a lot of what you just said, which is amazing. And we are going off the deep end now. So, do you want me to go to my other room and put my tinfoil hat on real quick? Because I will. If you, want me to. <laughs> you know, Actually, it's funny. Like, I, I get away with a lot of things because they go, "Well, you're a PhD. You can't be totally, <laughs> you know, crazy." Well, so that was my first question. So, before this happened to you, when you were a clinical psychologist, and you were obviously an academic, or at least partially an academic, uh. How much into the consciousness realm were you? And, and before you answer, I've always been in the consciousness realm. When I was six, I ran out of the back of Catholic church and my dad was like, where, I mean, chased me out of the back. Where are you going? I'm like, away from that cult. So, I mean, I was six, right? So, I mean, obviously souls like ours, you know, have lived many, I'm sure different lives and incarnations or whatever. And, you know, I've always been on this path, but like at what point in your age, you know, in your lifetime, in this current lifetime, did you truly realize that you were full blown woo woo like me? Um, well, um, <laughs> I did have a what I considered I, at the time I didn't, but uh, when I was a, uh, probably around eight or ten, I had the profound thought about I wonder if there's other Kathys in other worlds that are right. thinking and feeling exactly what I'm feeling at this time and space in this moment. Yeah, you know, and yeah. you know that for an eight year old or whatever that yeah. that's kind of profound. Yeah. Uh, but then I I didn't I didn't act on it. But the mm -hmm. opening happened, and this usually happens a lot of time. Having worked with abuse survivors, mm -hmm. at the age of eighteen, I was raped by a stranger, and I I I thought I was going to die. He had a knife at my throat, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, what happened was the, the uh, like a large movie screen opened in my mind, and I saw myself in the future as an older woman. And I saw, I saw the furniture, I saw the room, I saw the, uh, it was a black Chinese lacquered rocking chair. I saw everything. Wow. And I knew in that moment, I got very, very quiet and calm that I was going to survive this. So that was it. Because if I would have acted crazy, he probably would have used the knife and that would have been wow. it. But I, I wasn't supposed to be. So I kind of had an out-of-body experience and an enlightened opening. 
And uh, I was able to be like an actress in a play, wow. <laughs> you know, throughout the whole experience. Well, many years later, I walked into at the time that was my first husband's house. There was the, there was the room. There was the black lot wow. rocking chair. There was everything, the walls, the color, the design, everything was exactly how I saw it at the age of 18. So even though I'm no longer with that particular husband, um, you know, I saw into a probable future. And all I needed to know was that you don't need to go crazy about this. You're going to survive this traumatic experience. And as you know, working with clients, uh, you know, therapy clients, I, I see that a lot. Anyone who's been you know, physically, emotionally, sexually abused, you know, younger on, they become so hyper vigilant. Now, before that, I had no incidences of any type of abuse, mm -hmm. but it does open up a sixth sense and ESP, a psychic awareness. And they do tend to be, you know, be able to see things that others can't. How many lucky husbands have there been? <laughs> 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 so you're on the third or you're only on the third? No, no, no. I, I'm, there, I'm taking a big break right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think That's life awesome. is complicated enough. <laughs> so, so it's funny because like I'm on my, so my current is my third and she's amazing. And I mean, I, there's no way it'll be anybody after that. But that is really funny how like we really do go through incarnations of spouses. <laughs> You know, and each of them teaches you something. You oh, know. yeah. Tremendous. You know, Tremendous. so I have no animosity. The first one's dead. You know, he died after me. You know, I mean, after, I didn't die, but I mean, after I, I left. Right, I, I and, and, and so, you know, it was, you, you just, you learn from them. Even the, even the boyfriends that, you know, seem like, oh, God, what was I thinking? Later right. on, you know, it all makes sense. Yeah, no, it's a total yeah. blessing. Everything is a learning opportunity. Um, I got to ask you, though. I mean, you're amazingly, so how, how long did it take you to deal with, you know, the rape and, and, and the trauma and the psychological bullshit that you went through depravity, whatever you want to call it for. I mean, obviously because you completely integrated and healed it, but like, yeah, how, I was, I, I'm interested in that. Like how I long was did that totally take? Different. The universe sent me a corrective experience after that. Um, and showed me how one, I mean, cause I, I was a virgin at the time I was 18 sure. yeah. and uh, the, like I said, the universe said, we're not going to cripple her. We're going to provide something very loving, something very wonderful so that she knows this is not the way she should think the rest of her life. Right. So I, right. I was grateful for that, uh, that man that came into my life and it was a corrective experience. Do you think, uh, I mean, it's a opinion question, but I mean, it seems like, because obviously you didn't vibrate that experience into your life. Right. So, I mean, it was like, it, it was something that had to happen to you as part of the path for you, the soul path for you in this incarnation. But do you think that everyone has these moments in every lifetime and that it's just learning from them, no matter how traumatic they are? Yeah, you know, I, I do. It made me a better therapist. Suddenly I had more abuse survivors coming to me. And with that became more dissociative identity disorder sure. clients sure. who, you know, used to be called multiple personality. And these are these are tough clients. Yeah. And uh, because I was open to um, very unusual, you know, awakening type experiences besides knowing what that was like. You know, not only did did those experiences make me a better therapist, but those clients made me a better therapist. You know, not not everybody. You know, you don't learn that in graduate school. That's for sure. Any of this stuff you learn on the job. And, uh, you know, they would have said, oh, it's so rare. You don't see that. Well, it's not rare, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, I look at everything now and say, you know, it didn't destroy me. It's not right. who I was, you know, right. just move on. I mean, even people say, oh, look at the technology you invented this and you wrote these books and you did this and you did that. And I go, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. You know, what's next? Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm exactly like you. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. I mean, that's like I was telling you off air. It's like, you know, 
wanting to cash out. I mean, once you are cashed out of the matrix, the matrix mentally, the matrix will do everything it can to pull you back in. And whether that's the ego or whether that's just patterned, you know, uh, behavior or even really just trauma. I mean, I think of like the ancestral transgenerational trauma that we've inherited from our parents and their forefathers and all that. And, and how we just have kept pieces of it, you know, constantly coming in and out. It's like almost oozing out of us and, you know, overcoming that. It's like you were saying, and we were talking off the air, it's, it really does become cathartic to lighten the load, but it's getting there. You know, that's, it, it's the course correction and the navigation and the maneuvering of getting there. Because like I said, like you said too, we have so much stuff. Yeah. And so much I, stuff. I always say, go look at that George Carlin, Carlin that Google that thing on my stuff. Yeah, it is, it is so enlightening. Unbelievable. George <laughs> Carlin was such a light. I mean, <laughs> such a light. I mean, I, I think of that one statement he says when people say, you think you have a first amendment or a 14th amendment, right? Let me tell you something. They have the right to kill you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that guy was, I mean, you talk to young kids of today and they don't even know who George Carlin is. And it's just like, Oh my God, man. Like I send what people, the younger people that I mentor, I always send them his best of on YouTube and say, if you really want to watch a person who is a true visionary, listen to George Carlin. I mean, that guy was telling it like it was way before any of this stuff was happening. Yeah, no, I've never seen anyone do the, the my stuff routine like he does. And, you know, but it feels good when you start getting rid of stuff. I mean, I've moved many times in my life and yeah. you know, taken yeah. up and, and made new friends wherever I went. And, but I do understand some people are very entrenched in where their job is and their house and their family and everyone else. And so not everybody... Um, is ready to do that. You know, uh, people who don't, you know, like the situation in California, many left, many find that they can't leave. You know, well, that's what I was just going to ask you. And again, it's an opinion question. And I want to go really woo woo in a second, but like, do you feel, and again, it's total opinion, but do you feel, and, and, and I do feel this way. So I'm kind of like, you know, letting you know already, but like, do you feel that soul growth occurs when you are flexible? Oh, more so than when you're not. Oh, absolutely. You know, I always say, keep an open mind. Just don't let your brain fall out, you know, <laughs> but, but yes, because if you're, if you're too, I've seen this happen too. If you're too rigid about things, yes. people tend to get arthritis. That's true too. Yeah. 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 Cause it matters. We are the observer. You are the observer. You are the I am consciousness. You are the creator of your reality. So if you're focused on negative things, ultimately, I mean, you think of cancer, you know, I always tell people cancer is literally created by a lack of forgiveness. There is someone or something, or sometimes it's a combination of both that you will not forgive. That's creating that oncological mutation of the cell that's creating cancer. And well, you know, it, it's such an easy cancer. thing. Yeah, it's such an easy thing to overcome. But was, letting was go. That, there was there was kind of a, a a pattern for clients of mine that that had breast cancer. Now this is not to point a finger and say, oh, you did this wrong or anything else. But I, I did begin to see it, and they tended to nurture everyone else in yes. life, but not themselves. Yeah. But so themselves. where to do the the disruption of the energy appeared in the very area that is symbolic of nurturance and sustenance the breast. And, right. you know, when they started to, you know, really pay attention and do things that for themselves, you know, uh, you know, I'm not talking about being totally selfish or narcissistic or anything like that, but, right. you know, to start loving self and doing for self, um, those were the ones that did really well in, in recovery. Kathy, you are amazing. I mean, we are so on the same wavelength. This is insane. I mean, so when I coach men, uh, I always tell them at the very beginning, like, it doesn't matter what I tell you about, you know, molecular biology or peptides or hormonal optimization or, you know, all the things that I'm quote unquote considered a master of. If you don't feel worthy of making these changes and being the person that we can discuss you becoming, it doesn't matter. My information is worthless. And what you were saying about, you know, women, and I see this in men. I mean, it's often even more in men, right? Because the man is brainwashed to go out and bring home the bacon and be the good father and the good husband and the loyal, you know, blah, blah, this and that. And they never focus on themselves. I mean, like when I tell them, like, do you love and trust yourself? They look at me like I'm insane. Mm -hmm. 
I love my wife, bro. I love my kids, bro. I love my job. You know, I love what I do. What about yourself? So many people don't understand what you were just saying. And it's not narcissistic. It's not egoic or grandiose or any of that stuff. It's literally, do you put in the work? As again, you said earlier in the show, for yourself. And again, yourself is your higher self. It's your connection to divinity. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I mean, we've that. all heard it on airplanes, you know, uh, in the event of, you know, an oxygen decrease, <laughs> parents uh, put your own mask on first before your child. <laughs> you know, they're literally so telling you there if you pass out. So, um, you know, I, I think that that's pretty symbolic of, you know, everything in life. You know, you really have to you're here for your own soul development and right. you're helping people along the way. But you can't do it at the expense of saying like, well, you know, I'm just going to be a martyr. I'm going to be a victim. Right. I'm just going to, right. you know, do everything. That's that's yeah, that's that's not cutting it, uh, sp you know, soul evolutionary growth wise. <laughs> I mean, but you said it. I mean, most people are taught that it's to, to be a martyr. I mean, that your you know self isn't important, especially women. I mean, like you said, like the nurturer, the caregiver, the maternal mom, the grandmother. You know, I think of the Jewish grandmother, the Jewish mother. I mean, it's like when do they actually truly take a moment for themselves? I mean, my wife has really worked hard on not caring for everyone. Like, you know, she spends an hour or to 90 minutes every single morning journaling, you know, sitting in stillness in you know our backyard, you know, when the sun comes up and all that. And she spent a lot of time in her life. But I mean, her mom was a Mexican immigrant and she literally trained her family, her brothers and sisters and siblings. She would say, this is her say. And she says, Monica, if you care, you worry. So imagine that training. And then you think about so many moms and grandmothers and turning that over to their daughters about worrying shows care. Yeah. We learn a lot from our mothers unconsciously. A lot of things they pass on their anxieties, their fears to us yeah. too. So you know, I always warn parents, be careful of, you know, I, I had somebody that hated spiders and she'd go crazy, you know, vacuuming the spiders up and so <laughs> forth. Like the minute she saw them, take out the vacuum cleaner. And of course her daughter, was fearful of spiders, <laughs> you know? So and Monica's mom would flip out about flies. Like yeah. she would literally stand on dinner tables to swat them and like, you know, put her own life at risk by like moving her body and gyrating herself into a position where she falls, she's going to kill herself. I mean, yeah, right. It's crazy. I, I want to talk to you about aliens. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. like I'm always up for talking about aliens. <laughs> well, did you like that transition? But I mean, like, you know, you had a near death experience. You saw what you consider, you know, higher order, higher consciousness beings. And, and look, I want to just set this up for what my understanding of it is. And no, I've never had an NDE. I've had profound meditations, very profound shamanic experiences. I've used 5-MEO uh, five times in my life. And so I've seen all sorts of things. I'm familiar with the machine elves. I've seen it all. And obviously I'm very well read like you and, you know, done a lot of work on myself. Um, but my understanding of higher dimensional beings is, and again, I know that I don't know the full story, but you're, you're talking, you know, obviously Jacques Vallée, you know, the great ufologist, you know, talked about visitations or experiences as more of a consciousness and not an actual physical reality experience. But aren't they really just like plasmatic discharge or, you know, energy beings, because again, they're not in a physical material body, you know, they've evolved or they're just, you know, of a higher order. I mean, isn't that what they really are? And so when we see them, I mean, I guess what, what I'm saying is Hollywood has done such a smear job usually of what these beings would essentially be. But again, you've experienced it. So I'm interested in like, you know, is it, is there any reality of physical for a, a, an interdimensional being? Well, I just had popped into my head to say, Tell them they may be future aspects of yourself. Right, right. And, <laughs> excuse right. me, um, you know, people would always ask, you know, these higher dimensional beings, where do they come from? I said, well, all they tell me is eighth dimension and beyond. You know, do they have names? No, I don't ask them names. I mean, they're like beings, you know, right. it's like they're not into names. That, that's <laughs> anthropomorphic. <laughs> hey, Kathy. You have to name everything, you know. What's her last name, Kathy? 
<laughs> That's right. Where'd you go to school? You know, um, what's their slave name? It's insane. Yes. <laughs> and and you know, I th- I was told we all have that ability to access that. You know, just like when I was writing um, uh, these recent sci-fi books, you know. Uh, you know, I don't think that those were directly my first guides that came through, you know, for the technology who were more geekish and technologically oriented. These were more like muses. They wanted to get this out. And that's why, you know, I was writing three to five pages a day. It was just coming through so fast. Yeah. Most people take 10 years to write a book or something yeah. like that, you know, and, you know, I got, uh, um, you know, like second book done was in six months. And uh, so it's uh, we all have access to, like I said, that you just have to ask. And sometimes mm-hmm. that's I would just sit there and I did not know where the story was going. And I'm thinking, like, you know what this and and then all of a sudden an idea would come through yeah. and it would all tie together. And yeah. it was like it was like, oh, OK, I'm just trying to keep up with you guys. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this, but I get yeah. it now. Yeah. And and it got became exciting. It was like people read the books and they go, it's like watching a movie. Well, mm-hmm. I'm very visually oriented. And, right. you know, before I became a therapist, I did work in the news field. And so I'm very, you know, television news and so forth like that. And, of course, when I lived in California, you know, a lot of my friends were all in the movie industry. So you you start to to think that way. But, you know, it's like we're all have those muses and that information coming down. But the majority of us, you say, oh, that sounds too weird. You know, when I was told I needed to use crystal rods to transmit those mathematical algorithms on my Trinfinity 8 device to humans holding these rods, you know, I was like, huh? they showed they looked, first of all, in my memory to see if there was anything that I could relate to. And they showed me the picture of Superman in the Fortress of Solitude, downloading those huge crystals that uh, gave the whole history of his race. And he had access to them. And I thought, oh, crystals store information. Yeah. What if I pass information through the through these crystals in a way that it won't get stuck in the crystal, but it'll take it and immediately let go of it to the human holding it? You know, and of course, there's cords attached into the computer. It's not like you're just holding crystals right, in your hand. Right. Um, but, you know, it's sort of like even finding a place in the world to grow these crystals the way I wanted to so they could be, you know, lab grown so that they could and, and still be co- real quartz crystals so that this could be affected. But, you know, if they had given me all this information up front, I probably would have run in the other direction because it seemed sure. way too, it, it, it seemed like too big of a, a, a job. And, you know, some people say, oh, I can feel the feminine energy in this device because, you know, when males create software based programs, they like to do all the bells and the whistles and make it complicated and so forth. And this is very, very easy to navigate. And I said, well, you know, I wanted to be able to navigate it easy without having to, you know, look too much in an instruction manual to figure it out. So, you know, so we... uh, so, um, oh, so we're talking about aliens. I got off the track. Well, no, 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 you're not off track. I mean, I mean, I'm everything you're saying, I find fascinating. I, I mean, I've met track. aliens. I yeah. have met aliens. Um, some walk amongst us, you know, there's that kind. Well, well so, so before no. you go deeper, let's just classify some things. So, you know, because obviously, again, I read your article. Uh, I haven't read your books, but I will now that I'm speaking with you. Um, I'm, 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 I'm one of those people now that has like eight books at once you know it's like they're here and then i go from there to there to there just processing information and that's another thing about like what's happening with consciousness right like we're able to just like you said download and receive this information and like same thing with you with quantum physics like same thing for me i mean i i, I remember i read uh you know walter russell's book the secret of light like five or six years ago and everything changed for me at that point like you know people start talking to me and they're like dude, you're like a human supercomputer. How do you know this stuff? And I swear to God, I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I say, I just access it, you know? So it's like, you know, people like us are just getting these downloads and receiving this information, but let's just quantify like the planet right now in the third dimension. Clearly you just said it. There's super numbers of beings from different dimensions, from different, you know, planetary bodies, if we want to call them that uh, it doesn't matter whether the earth is a, is a plane or whatever uh, what do they call it a curve or uh, what is it what is the word they use i don't know it doesn't matter but i mean it, essentially there's just so much life teeming here you know i love charles fort you know he said the earth is a zoo 
And we're some of the Las Vegas of the universe. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, like, well, how would you classify though for people that want to ask who is? And I know it's a tough question, but like, who is really the dark side? Who are the people slash beings that are attempting to hold humanity back from ultimate, you know, higher evolution? Well, if if you want to look at this, I mean, some people look at this whole life as uh, an elaborate simulation. For and sure. We are the avatar beings and we're on a soul level up there playing. OK, let's let's throw in some conflict here. OK, who's going to play the dark force this time? Who wants to play the light right. force? You know, right. and, uh, you know, I think that there's some of that going on as well, you know. And, For sure. Uh, For sure. Yes. Uh, and and so we 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 kind of, you know, it's sort of you kind of don't know everything that's going on, obviously. <laughs> and some of the some of the beings out there are uh, spiritually evolved and some are not. Yeah. You know, uh, I know some well-known people who I've had dealings with have talked about the fact is, oh, all aliens are good. And I'm thinking like, what naive you no, are that's you? insane. And, um, but then I hear behind the scenes, they're really saying, yeah, well, there's some bad ones, but they don't want to come on record as saying that. Right. Cause they're afraid. Right. They're afraid they're they're They don't want to instill fear, but you know, there's, there's biological entities out there that have been obviously uh, produced. And, uh, you know, that's why I tried it to bring forth in my stacks library truth, the truth series books, some of this stuff in the origins because of what they were starting to tell me. And um, there is there's races out there that are of hive mind. And yeah. actually, that's what seems to be taking over Earth that's, right now is exactly the hive right. mind and mentality. Yes. And you think, yes. and that's, you know, um, when there is no individual soul, angelic soul, which is the human race is an individual angelic soul is intended to be that way, not a hive soul. Absolutely. And the hive soul. Uh, they they have allegiance to their hive. So That's within right. their hive, they all know what they're thinking and doing and right. so forth like that. But anyone outside of that hive, my, you know. So Kathy, that's the metaverse. That's yeah. literally the metaverse. Let's be honest. I mean, that yeah. is where they are attempting it. Call them they, the transhumanists or whoever's behind it. You know, again, Steiner called it Aramon. But that's where they're taking humanity, at least vast swaths of humanity. When I was yeah. at that mastermind, we were all talking about building off the grid and creating communities like, you know, calm communes of people like us who are not connected to the system anymore that don't have, you know, ATM cards or banks or any of that. Like we're all living and producing what we can produce, you know, relative to our skills, probably the way humanity used to be before yeah, technology. Like which back is, in you know, time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, everything's cyclical, you know. Yeah. Uh, many, I mean, many of our, much of our history has been erased over hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of years. I lead groups to Egypt, you yeah. know, every, all yeah. the time and, you know, really talk about the true uh, history that's going on there. Not that, yeah, the pyramids went back 4,000 years. We'll forget <laughs> right. that. That's BS. Um, and, you know, the origins of some of it and a lot of it, like I said, has either been hidden, erased or, uh, you know, just lost. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, you know, there was a lot of races before right. our current, you know, uh, incarnations here. And uh, um, we've, you know, due to they said there's been over like 83 different pole shifts over hundreds of thousands of years. And some of those lands have gone down. Some of those civilizations have gone down and they started from scratch again. So it's like some of those were evolved civilizations and. You know, and so we think that, you know, we invented certain things and we're like, no, it's kind of in the collective consciousness. We're just remembering. You know, I, I had when I first when I first brought Trinfinity 8 out to the world, um, I had some people coming and saying, oh, this is Atlantean technology, but in a different different packaging. I never thought I'd see it again in this lifetime. And he said, this is the way we used to do things. But, you know, of course, it's in a, you know, a laptop computer and right. whatever. But yes, I mean, even when you go in Egypt, the sound temples and healing temples of Saqqara, you know, they worked with sound 
in, in, in chambers where certain sounds actually set an oscillation, a resonance up in the body to heal you. I mean, oh, that's been lost. Yeah. I mean, of course, yeah. the sound healers of today are trying to bring it back, but the mainstream media, I mean, mainstream medicine, you know, thinks that's all, you know, a woo-woo. Um, uh-huh. But, you know, the ancients knew that wasn't. So I have a sound frequency technology in my bedroom right now, which I'll just tell you off air because I don't like sometimes when I start talking about it, you know, they scramble the trans- transmission. As you know, they're yeah. listening to everything that we're saying. It's like, oh, yeah. no, you're not allowed to say that. Well, like they already I, did it once. Do you saw it? Yeah, they scrambled us. I know when, yeah. when I asked you about what's compartmentalize them, I, I was going to say it to you, but I was like, you know, if I say it, it just brings more to it. But yeah, they do. Uh, there's one other thing though, that I wanted to ask you about. Um, and now I just lost my train of consciousness because I was thinking of what you were just saying too, about how they do do that. Um, oh, uh, so with your, um, Egypt tours, I definitely, my wife and I definitely, I want to do that with you. Uh, that's one of the few places I have not been, you know, I've heard of stories of like how unbelievably <laughs> resonant it is inside the Ascension temple, you know, during the, um, um, you know, what is it? The, uh, during, in, in December, um, Oh, the solstice? Solstice. I've heard amazing stories of that. Now, I've been to Peru many times. Uh, I'm going again. My wife and I are going from November 20th to December 2nd. I'm actually filming a television series for Billy Carson's uh, Forbidden Knowledge uh, t- dot TV. Uh, me, him, Matt LaCroix, and another person uh, just on filming stuff. And, and one of the people from Ancient Aliens, by the way, you probably know him, Brian Forster. He's going to be with us for Not a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be with us for a couple of days, and he's going to show us uh, – See, I don't want to say it because like they might zoom the transmission, but he's going to show us something that is basically not public record yet. In fact, ancient aliens wouldn't actually tackle this for for, for reasons yeah. you don't even, I mean, you know, and I don't have to mention, but uh, I'm very fascinated to go back there. But um, when do you, when is your next one? Are you doing these still um, annually? Well, yeah. I mean, each one time I go and I say, you know, I don't know if this is going to be my last. I'm, I'm, uh, we're, um, we've got one starting on November 19th for, awesome. uh, for two weeks. And, um, it, it, you know, it's just all after I had my near death experience and I did the technology, my guide said, you know, you need to return to Egypt to relearn what you know. Awesome. And, you know, so I went in not reading anything about it and just experienced. And because I went in without any preconceptions, which is always the best way to do things, because then you, you're surprised yeah. when great things happen. And, yeah. you know, I remember the first time uh, we have time for this quick story. Um, I was I was in the uh, there was only three people of us in the uh, king's chamber. And I got into the sarcophagus and I immediately started toning. Nobody had told me to do that, but I started toning. And immediately I saw, now there is no door, there's no sarcophagus lid, but immediately I saw the sarcophagus lid close shut on me and I was entombed. And there's a wow. brief moment of panic. Uh-oh, I'm, I'm, I'm buried alive. And right. my guide said, you know what to do. And I realized I did know what to do. I slowed down my breathing and it was like an out of body experience. And there was a shaft that opened in the bottom of the sarcophagus. And I found myself going down into the pyramid and thought, it wasn't, why was I supposed to go up? You know, why am I going down? But because I went down, I could see all the different levels. And I got down to way down underneath the pyramid where I saw there was water level, water tunnels. And I never heard about these before. And, uh, and so, um, and I shot, I went through the Sphinx too, shot out tunnels in the Sphinx in the head. And I didn't know there was a hole in the top of the head and I saw all the different tunnels. So I knew at one point I had to get down there. So, uh, working with my guide, uh, my, my physical guide in Egypt, yeah. uh, we, we worked with the department of antiquities and the Giza plateau, you know, all it is is enough money and you can get down anywhere you want. Of course. And, what was that and, guy's name? Holly, Holly. So whatever his name was, the guy that used to be the head of all that in Egypt. The, the, oh, the uh, Hawali Sawas. Yeah. Hawali <laughs> And uh, no, it wasn't him. And uh, so uh, the Giza Plateau guy, my guy, and I, it was like 4 a.m. in the morning. We're going down. It, there's a, a gate underneath the causeway and you go down. It's like 150 feet. There's three different levels, this rickety old ladder and so forth. And I got down to the very bottom where the water is, is slapping around the edge of the, um, uh, the, the ladder. 
And, you know, I could see there's tunnels down there and I can see that there's a sarcophagus buried in the water. And I asked the guy, has anybody ever tried to open this? And he said, no. Or if they have, they haven't been able to open it. My guides told me immediately, you have to have the right DNA. It's hermetically sealed. It's a portal. Wow. And so I took I took uh, water samples of it uh, and really quickly because I didn't know if they were going to stop me. I had already planned that certain types of water bottles and and then, you know, had it sent to a lab to look at, uh, you know, uh, the chemistry of the water and so forth, which I won't get into now. I mean, you'd find you can find it if you go to my blog at trinfinity8.com and look up pyramids, the tunnels, you know, because they asked me to speak about it at the pyramid conference. And then later on, I did crawl underneath the Sphinx. I said, I probably, there's not too many people who've been up the ass of the Sphinx. <laughs> and, but wow. those are also have been closed off over time, but you can get down there. There's a certain way to get down there, but you know, so there's just so much. And I saw when I went down initially in that experience underneath the pyramids, there's a city down underneath there. And they deny it, but there is a city underneath there and more tunnels than you can possibly imagine. And when I started looking at all the pyramids in the world, uh, a lot of them all have water tunnels underneath it. So we knew it was probably the thing, the fact there's a hydroelectric type of power energy station. It made a lot more sense. You need water. And I think they also ran their, their, um, their ceremonies, you know, the process of going through the river of sticks, you know, to the, uh, as, as uh, in the, uh, the death process. So there's so much, so much lost. And they just kind of, you know, explain it away. I go to Saqqara and the guys, the, some of the guys would say, Oh, this was for this. And I'd go, no, it wasn't. <laughs> this That's was amazing. for, and then I explain it. And then they just get really quiet and they start videotaping or something. So that, uh, and I said, this is what, how I remember it. This is not, you know, what you're saying is not quite accurate. So. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Anyway. Unbelievable. I mean, there's so many pyramids on the planet. I mean, I, I'm sure you remember when you were in California, but I mean, like I drive around all the time and I know intuitively that I'm looking at pyramids you know, under mounds of dirt, you know, I, that, that's another thing I was going to say to you. And now I remember it just, you know, my guides just told me, Oh, you need to say that to her. But, um, we are like in a plane of reality, call it a simulation, call it a hologram, uh, a universal hologram that is being edited, you know, on the fly. It's like you said, right? Like you, 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 you walk into a separate timeline And you deal with like that, you know, what do they call it? The Mandela effect, which is what you were in, right? Like where you knew you had chai tea lattes and these people are telling you no. And I've seen like 20 different things in the last two years myself personally um, that proves that there's a Mandela effect too. Um, And again, it's like you said, it's reality. It's reality or timeline hopping. You know, you you, you just are in a different uh, time space. I mean, Um, I wish I knew how to do that at will. (laughs) Right. Right. Or, or that you're even, or that you're even um, you're conscious of it in the moment that it happens. Cause sometimes it like you recollect and you're like, Oh my God, you know, you have to actually like go check on it. You know, you have to check on Google like that's any indication, right? Cause they're constantly editing Google and Wikipedia. I mean, I think of these poor kids, you know, under the age of 25 today, Kathy, and it's like, they believe everything that comes out of this. And it's like, dude, like half of this stuff, if not all of this stuff is made up. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, yeah, we live we live in such a strange world. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like a, they say, oh well, just sit back and it's like a it's like a weird sci-fi movie and and you know you wait for the commercial breaks and you know let's hold on tight and see where where we go with it. The Nissan commercial, enjoy the ride. Remember yeah, from the nineties? I mean, enjoy the ride. We are in a video me. game. Don't get so wrapped up in in the emotional component or the feelings of powerlessness because, you know, you you really do have some power whether you choose to, you know, uh, play along with that or not. And I see that, you know, I don't know, something has shifted in the last week. It seems like people are starting to push back more and more. And uh, so something something's happening. I mean, it's awesome that you said what you said, because I haven't come out publicly other than in my inner circles of like what I'm doing and 
hopefully by the time that I run this podcast, which isn't going to be that long, I'm actually going to go to my podcast company today and move a lot of stuff around because this is so profound. But uh, it's interesting. A lot of people are feeling what you're feeling, but I, I or what I'm feeling, as you were saying about like, it's just time to lighten the load. But, you know, maybe just to kind of summarize and wrap this up. Um, where do you think, so, you, you know, one of your points is Ascension Dynamics and we've kind of hit it as we were talking about, but what is Ascension to you? What, what does Ascension really truly mean? There's so many esoteric meanings of the word, right? Um, you know, depending on spiritual vision, your, you know, your, uh, Abra- if you have Abrahamic brainwashing, you know, all of that stuff, but what does Ascension really mean? Well, you know, I have a lot of friends that they know they're not coming back to this dimension when they die nor do they want to, <laughs> let's right. put it that way. Yeah. You know, they, we can yeah. leave it for all those others behind, you You know, it, it's, it, it's a no. emotional playground. And some of the older souls who've been around the block maybe a little bit more, it's not to saying that we're any more enlightened, we're just saying, you know, that's not where I'm at anymore. You I'm know, done. I learned that dealing with the, all that emotional turmoil and what that feels like and, oh my God, it's so exciting and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, to me, Ascension to me, is obviously uh, working at evolving and letting go of things and moving beyond, you know, to the next level. I've in my dreams, I've seen the fifth dimensional level. Right. And, you know, it's kind of a nice place. And uh, (laughs) I'm, you know, when I go, it's sort of like, I'm fine about that. You know, it's sort of like, I, I truly have told all my friends and a lot of them have told me, I'm not coming back here. And I think that's really interesting. A lot of them that aren't coming back um, had been decided not to have children in this lifetime. Interesting. So there would be so no, no more ancestral ties right. that would be tying them back to this dimensional plane. And I'm seeing this more than ever. I'm seeing it a lot in Maui. All the major women healers are returning to like the ancient Lemurian lands yeah. to, to, you know, and none of them had children. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And yeah. I knew I wasn't going to have children when I was a teenager. I just, you know, I mean, I could have, but, uh, but I said, you know, I don't think that this is what I'm supposed to be doing in this lifetime. So even though I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing, I knew that that the family unit and, and which is a lot of work. And if you're going to accept it, you better do it right. <laughs> you know, not half ass. And I knew that that wasn't, that wasn't where I was at. I mean, I, I worked with a lot of children as a therapist and which was kind of ironic, you know, telling parents how to parent their kids, you know. Right, but, right. you know, sometimes you have to be you be able to stand back and you can see it more clearly than the parent that's entrenched in it. Because, you know, we were all kids at one time. We understand that what, you know, kids try to do. It's it's interesting that what you, what you just said about children, because I had two I have two biological daughters and my wife has three three biologicals. And I raised for the most part her youngest daughter, who's a college now. Uh, and she was, you know, the bonus, we call it bonus kids, bonus sister of my uh, two daughters. And my two biologicals are 12 and 14. And again, they're now in Florida with my ex. Um, but my 14 year old is like, oh my God, dude, she's, well, first off, neither of my kids have ever gotten a single shot. Right. So they're like beacons of light. And, you know, they've been raised in, you know, like, you know, household with my wife and I, who are very like you, right. You know, like we're very spiritually evolved and, uh, they're just now that they're on their own, I'm seeing them, you know, react and I should say respond. They're not really reactive. Uh, they're just amazing children. I mean, my, my 12 year old is a little bit, you know, different. She, she's like a being that's like, why am I in the third dimension? And the 14 year old is just an old soul, ancient wisdom. Like she literally finishes my sentence. Like, I feel like she's reading my mind. Like it's unbelievable. She'd be like, no dad, you know, you're not thinking that. I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, Oh, I know you just thought what you thought. I'm like, I mean, at first when she would do that to me, I was like, what is going on? And then my wife would tell me, she's like, oh no, that's just Alex. Like, how have you not always known? She's like super intuitive, you know? And so that was like, just in recent last year, I started figuring that out, but they're now on their own. They've been back in Florida with my ex and their mom for four months now. And I just, you know, the text, I mean, my 14 year old sends me texts and I'm like reading like Walt Whitman. You know what I mean? It's like, what? So there is a component of me, and I want to ask you this, and maybe we'll end it on that. Um, do you think a lot of the newer souls, say like in the 20 years, because obviously they're also the one that are being the most attacked, right? Through technology and this transhumanist bullshit. 
um, are the most advanced souls and that they've kind of like consented to come back to this, you know, we'll call it a shit show in the third dimension. And so some of them are, are obviously like, you know, I would just, you know, maybe egoically say one of them is like my daughter, my 14 year old. But I mean, do you think that that's kind of what's happening? And that's there. They've come back to make sure that we do make it or to, you know, and making it is uh, evolving. Well, the answer is yes and no, yeah. <laughs> at least from yeah. my opinion. I mean, there are uh, some that have decided to come in to help out, you know, right. and then there's an awful big influx of what some people refer to as baby souls. They yeah, haven't had totally. as much experience in the third dimensional realm. And to them, uh, intense emotion is like cocaine. Totally. You know? And yeah. they're, they, they, they're, they're just stirring it up and, and so forth like that, where, you know, the one, some of us who may have had more incarnations and so forth yeah. like that, and, and say, um, you know, that's not what I want, as I was just saying before. Right. You know, it's almost as if we're seeing what's happening and saying, you know, maybe we've gotten a little too complacent on the dimension and we need to see how bad it is to kick us out and say, OK, it's time to go to the next. And I think that that's kind of what's going on as well. You know, yeah. that's just my yeah. take on it. Yeah. But um, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of baby souls right now. And of course, then, then we got the hive souls and, and the artificial intelligence, too. And so um, so, you know, anyone I would just say is death is so easy. I, and I'm not yeah. going to advocating to end your life or anything like that. But, you know, it's like going to sleep at night and then, you know, it's like a moment of blackout and then you're in another place. Do you do you think people that you know relevant, do you think that people that kill themselves to take their own lives, that there's a, a price to pay, a karmic price to pay to do that? Meaning that you really, because you're right. I mean, I'm with you and I've debated, not debated this, but I've meditated very, very deeply on this. Um, you know, death is just a change of expression, right? You go from local to etheric you know, ultimately, but like, do you think, and, and I know that's for you and people, for people like me and you, and a lot of people that listen to this, uh, you know, podcast, that's not a big deal, but for some people they're like, what, you know, cause they're deathly afraid of dying. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. like dying is, you know, the end. Dying is easy. Remember that dying is easy. Life living is hard. <laughs> you so do you, but do you think there is a do you um, think that there's kind of a, some type of punishment or, or a burden? I mean, I would call it like a karmic burden. Yeah. Well, um, this is how I understood it. And I would tell clients this in the past who were contemplating, you know, I said, I, you know, I can't stop you if you want to kill yourself, you know, <laughs> I can hospitalize you. But, you know, if you don't want to live, there's no you're going to find a way and there's no me stopping. But I will tell you one thing. If you didn't work it out, if you're trying to get away from what it is you can't work out on this level, you're going to still find it on the other level to work Absolutely. with. You might as well you might as well deal it with it here, or it's going to chase you to the next level. And that in itself has been a deterrent, <laughs> you right. know. Right. And so I think that you know it's not like we're being punished if we decide to take. I mean, because there's sometimes you take your life to maybe save somebody else, right? And that's totally a different you know, ball of wax or, you know, yarn or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I, I, cause we are the true judges of ourselves. You know, right. we have, we do our own life reviews when we pass on and we judge as a soul, how well we did from a higher perspective and, and as fair as can be. And you go, well, I didn't do so good there. I could have done this differently. Oh God, I really screwed that up, you know? And so where can I improve next time around? Yeah. And um, so, you know, most people probably don't think it's that complicated. They think you die, you die, that's it. Nope, nope, not true. You know, I mean, at least from my perspective and what I've learned. That's amazing. I, I want to read you something that I wrote. I think it was two days ago. It might have been three days ago from just one of my meditations about life reviews. And I want you to just kind of say yes or no. Hopefully I can find it real quick here. Uh, oh, yeah, here it is. I said, did you know at the end of physical body life incarnation, we see our every thought and action and it's true intent. The divine being we are, the Christ of our own consciousness, aka our higher self, will review everything we've done unto others and make us, as the ego, realize we also did it to ourselves. What do you think about that? Right on. You know, I watched that movie that with old, it was an old movie with Meryl Streep called Defending Your Life, you know, and 
how, you know, they were doing the life review when they passed over it. It's called Albert Brooks, Albert Brooks. Yeah, yeah. too. It's funny, but there, there's some truth to it, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it's like, we are more than our physical bodies. We are so, and that's why I think that this is a spiritual war that we're going right. through right now between the angelic individual souls, maintaining that, preserving that versus the hive souls, which are not of an evolved status you know? do you think the hive souls are reptilian in nature i mean you know I mean, if we if we put the the, the uh, abrahamic tinted glasses on you know they want to talk about the fallen angels you know versus the archangels or the, the angels of light whatever you want to call them uh, the golden illumination elohim or something like that but like is that i mean because there's a lot of evidence that proves you know there's a great author i don't know if you're familiar with his works i should connect you with him he's an amazing human being his name is pierre sabak that's not his real name. His real name is Simon. Uh, I forget his last name, but anyway, he's written two books. One is called the uh, holographic culture. And the other one is the murder of reality. And he basically is a root language etymologist, genius guy. Mm -hmm. And he says that this reptilian beings or race or whatever they are has hijacked language as we understand it, all languages on this planet. And they're essentially ruling from behind the veil is that what it is? I mean, I mean, I mean, are they, you know, some form of a serpent, you know, consciousness or race? I know it's a hypothetical, but well, I, I, I do believe that there is been a hidden alien agenda from, yeah. you know, going back, yeah. you know, hundreds of thousands of years. That is still there is still a presence. Um, you know, it's not just the reptilians, it's, yeah. you know, there's other races in there too. And, uh, you know, it's sort of like, uh, they want this playground. They want, they want earth, you know, and yeah. if they're going to do a, a bio invasion by creating their own people from within, so it looks like they're all human, you know, that's kind of what this whole transhumanist movement that's really is, what it is, is yeah. all really about, you know, if, if the aliens came down on ships and attacked us, we'd all be scared to death, but you know, it's an unseen right. invasion. And yeah. uh, which is even more brilliant and diabolical. And I think that, you know, that's kind of what's going on. They, the hive minds are usually, um, you see that more in the animal, the second dimension. Right. Right. So some of these beings may be coming into the third dimension, into human or into physical, I should say physical, right. matter, not human, right. physical matter and experiencing some of this stuff for the first time. You know, we've all met those people. You think like, oh my God, they yeah, just- Yeah, their energy is so off. Yeah. They just they just born yesterday yeah. and that's kind of what it feels like yeah. they're coming up from the second dimension because we're all the dimensions this is the critical time all the dimensions are moving up we're at a universal ascension point you know uh in the process every 256,000 years or whatever it is where where sometimes just it's dimensional every 26,000 or something years right. so um i remember of you know uh, they corrupted the Great Pyramid. It was an ascension chamber at one time, and that souls got trapped in there, and wow. they would not get untrapped until the next uh, ascension point. So there's a lot of work there still be done. I mean, this all sounds crazy stuff, but, you know, I saw no, it. I, it's not crazy to me at all. It's resonating deeply with me. I mean, do you think – I mean, I know we can't put timelines on it because, again, we are – the future is changing the past, and the past is changing the future. I mean, the timelines are not – are fluid. But do you think that we are close – you know, relatively speaking, like within five to 10 years, or is that just a pipe dream? Well, I certainly think a lot of things can change in five to 10 years. Yeah. You know, I don't like to put a time date on stamp on it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I see a few big things coming down the pike, which, you know, I don't want to talk about either. Right. <laughs> you sure. know? Right. And, you know, if people are, are if it's going to happen in, to them personally, they'll be affected. Uh, their higher conscious will let them know either in a yeah. dream state or something else beforehand. You know, I mean, even Edgar Casey, the great psychic, said everyone. You mean David Wilcock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, would, would, would be born beforehand. So, uh, yes, I say always beware of false prophets. You know, there's a lot of them right now. There are many of them. Uh, yeah, there, are there are many, are many of them. of them. Yes. Well, I would I would actually say it's interesting, and then I'll let you go, I promise. And this has been a profound podcast. I could talk Thank with you so forever. Much. Jay, you're, you're, I know. you're I mean, this is like so profound. Well, I am going to talk to you after this ends, but I would say, which is very interesting, so Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil and, you know, the transhumanist, the singularity is coming in 2030. They're actually moving it up now, by the way, in case you 
didn't know that. Not that you should care. But then the Diane Cooper books, who is, you know, the angelologist, she connects with angels and, you know, channels a lot of like, you know, essentially archangels. She says in her works, it's 2031 when we have the shift, when we have, you know, the angelic pro, pro human, pro divine beings move to where they're going to move. And then, you know, you think about Kurzweil and the transhumanists are having their moment. So maybe that's really what it is, Kathy. Maybe it really is five or six years from now. Um, you just choose direction you go based on your consciousness. And if you're down here, you know, vibrating in victimhood, uh, root chakra based, you go where the transhumanists want you to go, which is connected to the metaverse, being yeah. siphoned I mean, in the battery, you know, like the matrix. You know, it depends yeah. on where you are in, in, in your own process, how, how, uh, uh, how critically it will will affect you. So, you know, th there are no coincidences in life. You are where you're supposed to be at any given moment as part of your process. And, you know, I don't look at it as a punishment, nothing. You know, we use karma. We think, oh, bad, bad. I don't want any more karma, yeah, yeah. you know, right. but uh, but it's just a learning tool. Beautiful. All right. Well, let me just put your two websites that, you know, we yes. want to promote. So, and the, and the Stacks Library of Truth, the book, that's the name of the book, the first book. Check it out. I, I so had so much fun writing these books and I think you will reading them. I mean, I'm going to order them myself today. They're on Amazon, right? Or do I get them from Strax Library yes. of Truth? Is no, you, you, no, you can get them directly through Amazon. Uh, you can okay. either Google me, the author name, if you don't remember. The, but the first book is Stax Library of Truth. The second book is Stax Awakening Truth. And the third, the last part of the trilogy will come out next year. But Stax Awakening hasn't come out yet. So you're going to be sending me the PDF, no, Stax right? Stax Awakening you know. Truth is coming out like in about two weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's why so, I want you to send me the PDF so I don't have to wait. So I can read them both at the same time. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah. But honestly, uh, thank you so much for coming on here today. So guys and gals and all the amazing people that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, please, as always, support the amazing individuals like Dr. Kathy Forty. Go to trinity8.com. Go to StacksLibraryOfTruth.com, purchase her books, uh, you know, look into the technology that she sells, which is, again, Trinfinity 8. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. I will see all of you guys very soon.